welcome back to Shelby on Safari. I hope you're well and ready to meet another spooky animal today. You may be first asking yourself, why am I sitting on the floor in my conservatory? Well, it turns out that someone has once again stolen my seat. So therefore I've made a nice little comfy spot here on the floor and that gives me plenty of time to hang out with our buddy Pepper, who you may see kind of strolling around behind me during today's video. I also thought I would dedicate today's video to my good buddy, Laura. She is a fantastic friend, but also an incredible artist. In fact, if you're a returning subscriber, chances are you've seen her artwork around on my channel. For her artwork is featured in the channel logo and the banner artwork as well. If you want to see more of her beautiful work, check out the links to her webpage in the description down below. And Laura, this video is dedicated to you because I know of your love for bats. And thus, we'll be focusing on these beautiful and mysterious animals today by answering two common questions about bats. Do bats really drink blood? And why do they sleep upside down? And of course, we'll cover some of the spooky myths and legends of bats around the world. But first, if you're new here and you want to learn all about animals in the wild or in pop culture, be sure to hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding so you can be the first to see all the new content. Now, let's get started. So there are over 1,400 different species of bat found all over the world, and they range both in size and shape. In fact, there is the bumblebee bat, which weighs less than a penny, making it the world's smallest mammal. And speaking of mammals, bats are the only true flying mammal. They're very impressive. And with so many different species of bats around the world, you would think surely there are a lot of bats that drink blood because that's what we think of usually when we think of big scary bats being vampires and all of this, especially during October. But alas, friends, only three species of bat out of the 1400 solely drink blood. They are the white-winged vampire bat, the hairy-legged vampire bat, and the common vampire bat. So why is hematophagy? That's such a fun word to say. Hematophagy. Hematophagy which is subsiding on just eating while well, drinking blood, so uncommon. Well, blood is super high in protein, about 93%, while being very low in carbohydrates and vitamins. And there are a lot of blood-borne diseases that can make living on just drinking blood quite troublesome. So how do these three bat species do it? Well, a few years ago, researchers looked at bat droppings. That's right, <laughs> bat guano. It can tell you a lot about animals, and I know poo can be gross, but there's a lot of information to be found in bat droppings, apparently. They specifically looked at the hologenome, which is the entire set of genes, and that includes the microbes and the bacteria that all call that creature home. They looked not only at the common vampire's hologenome via their bat droppings, but oh no, they compared it to other bat species, ones like fruit-eating bats, insect-eating bats, a whole variety, to see what makes the common vampire bat's hologenome unique. And they found 280 things specifically that made it unique in the form of 280 bacteria species that would make any other mammal very sick. But alas, survive and thrive in the common vampire bat. So the gut microbes of the common vampire bat are quite impressive. But what else makes the common vampire bat just so cool? With a name like vampire bat, you're gonna want to expect them to have razor sharp teeth. And I can assure you, yes, they are razor sharp. They don't have a lot of them, but the ones they do have are certainly that. But what's even cooler than their sharp teeth is their heat sensor. 
that's on their nose that can guide the way to where the warm blood is flowing on their victims. And of course, yes, they have to bite their victim, but then they actually lap up the blood with their tongue. And the craziest thing about their saliva is that it's anticoagulating, which means that it prevents the blood from clotting. But what about young baby vampire bats? Do they drink blood as well? Well, as mammals, they actually drink their mother's milk for about three months before moving on to blood. Now let's look at why do bats sleep upside down? It doesn't seem particularly comfortable, especially for us humans where we sleep either on our side, on our back, or completely spread out across the bed and knocking all the blankets off. But it's certainly comfortable for the bats. That's because they have a few different special adaptations that make it so. The claws of the bat actually don't require any energy to grab onto an object. Whereas when we have to grab on and hang on while they're doing pull-ups at the monkey bars at the gym, we do require a lot of energy, some of us more than others. Bats also have special tendons that help keep their toes and their claws stationary and that require the bat to relax to be able to hang on. And while you may think gravity would be working against bats in this case, gravity and their own body weight help keep them locked in place and ready to rest. But there's another aspect of why do bats sleep upside down that's a bit intriguing. As we know, bats are flying animals. And to fly, you need to be a bit lightweight. That's why birds actually have hollow bones. But bats, unfortunately, do not. So how do they make themselves as light as possible to be able to fly? Well, bats have evolved to have shorter and thinner back legs, which makes it tricky because they cannot actually stand upright because of this. Their body weight and pressure would be too much for their little tiny back legs to handle. And so they can't actually get the running start that a lot of flying animals need. To lift off from the ground, you need just that, lift to work against gravity and get you up in the air. Think about hang gliders. They gotta get a running start to get that lift to jump on off the cliff and glide. Birds need to do the same thing, especially heavier birds as well. They need that running start. So with bats having little baby back legs that can't stand upright, how do they get a running start? Well, Hanging upside down actually helps generate that lift because they're already up. It's more like a drop and glide kind of movement. But alas, friends, there's always an exception. And in this case, seven, because there are seven different species of bat that actually don't sleep upside down. Instead, they sleep curled up in leaves. How cute. So now it's time to look into bat myths and legends. During the spooky season of October, as you can imagine, there are plenty to go about. Hello, Kiana. Are you coming to say hi? Oh my God, you guys, we are graced by her presence. Oh, look at, she's come to join us. Oh. <laughs> you know, it's a good day when Kiana comes, when we're talking about myths and legends, huh? Don't worry, we'll have an episode focusing on you very soon. Whoop, there she goes. <laughs> so bats, the myths and legends around these spooky creatures can go way back. Many folklorists refer to bats as being liminal, meaning that they don't really fit into the normality of things. They have wings and can fly, but yet they have fur. They seem to be kind of in between things. Neither here nor there. Let's first start off our tour of world myths about bats in a place I wish I was now, Fiji. One Fijian tale tells us that flying foxes actually first walked on all fours, whereas rats had wings. The flying fox borrowed their wings from the rat, 
but then refused to give them back. Which could explain why the rat now tries to retaliate against the flying fox by climbing up trees and trying to grab the young of flying foxes. But then also now why flying foxes carry their pups as to protect them from rats. In fact, speaking about flying foxes, if you want to learn more about them, check out my video on the flying fox just up here. One legend of bats from India gives us a bit of insight into the liminality between bats and how they're animals but have some human characteristics. This legend states that bats were originally unhappy birds and that they went to temple every day to pray to become humans. Alas, their prayers were answered one day, but only in part because they were given teeth, hair, and human faces, but retained their wings. With their transformation complete, they were ashamed to be seen by other birds and thus hid in caves during the day, only emerging at night. And sometimes they return back to the temples to once again pray, but this time to be turned back into birds. And ever heard of Aesop and his fables? Well, he too covered the subject of bats. In fact, one tale from Aesop tells us about a bat who borrowed money for a business venture that failed terribly. The bat therefore hides during the day to avoid creditors. And interestingly enough, the Greeks and Romans referred to people who were active during the night as bats. And apparently these bats humans that adopted a nocturnal lifestyle were also trying to avoid people that they owed money to. Speaking of bats and humans, you know the expression blind as a bat? Well, are bats actually blind? Well, bats don't have the sharp and colorful vision that we humans have. Well, some of us. <laughs> Instead, Bats have very sensitive, albeit very tiny, little eyes that help them see in conditions that we humans might consider pitch black. And that doesn't mean that they have poor vision, they just have different vision than we do. So I don't think Pepper actually made a cameo behind me during filming, so I thought I'd introduce you guys briefly to her here. We will be doing a video feature on the lovely Horsefields tortoises later in November. But if you learned something new, why not give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below, would you like to sleep upside down? I don't think I would. I prefer sleeping on my side. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you later. Bye.